There we go. There we go. Thank you, Pross. Yeah. I don't know. Our, our co-host has already fallen down on the job. So. I apologize. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding, Joey. Oh, I know. I know. All right, this is going to be obviously it's a different Ash Wednesday because we can't be together safely. Um, and I can't put ashes on your on your foreheads or your hands. How, uh, and I regret that, but uh, we're, we're doing the best we can here. Um, I want, I, I, I pray that you will fully participate in this service. When you see letters, words in gold or yellow, that's, that's for you to speak together at home. Um, I hope that you will sing along with the hymns. There's three hymns in this service. The words will be on the screen. Um, and following the sermon, Rather than the imposition of ashes, we will do a, a, the prayer of confession that is a unison prayer. So I invite, we, uh, while you will all be muted, um, Joey will lead you in that unison prayer of confession, which is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 11. Okay. So welcome to this time of worship. Welcome if this is your first time with us or you've been coming here for years. To the baptized and those not baptized, welcome. To members and non-members, welcome. Welcome to the doubters, the believers, the doubting believers. Welcome if you are male or female, black or white, rich or poor, young or old, or anywhere in between any of these. Welcome no matter who you love or who loves you. Welcome all to this time of worship.
The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all of our sins. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made, from the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Show us through the scriptures, O God, both your judgment and your grace, that we may be neither self-satisfied with our works nor terrified by your wrath. Enable us to accept Jesus as both our example of all goodness and the redeemer of all of our sin. For in him and through him we pray. Amen. Our first lesson today is from the book of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes, their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend our hearts and not our clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, 
for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Here ends the lesson. Our second lesson today is from the book of 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry, but as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the, the right hand and for the left in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Here ends the lesson.
Um, I'd invite you, if you're so inclined, now to stand for the reading of the gospel from the gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you and whenever you fast do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting truly i tell you they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty Father, blessed Lord, we give you thanks for this evening, for the ability to gather together in this way, to offer ourselves, our hearts and minds up to you in worship and praise, in confession, and in our lives. We give you thanks for the word that you give to us in your holy scriptures. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Do something here that. Oops. No. Oh. Well. Bear with me a minute, folks. Well, this is taking longer than I thought it would. 
Sorry. Oh, here we go. There. I feel better preaching with that behind me. Um, so Ash Wednesday and Lent remind us that God is God and we are not. Ash Wednesday, I think part of the purpose of that is to remind us that we are flesh and blood, mortal creatures. We are dust, and to dust we will return. Because we are flesh and blood, we are subject to sin and death. Lent is the season of the church calendar that is for reordering our relationship with God and one another. We acknowledge the reality of sin and renew our desire and efforts to cooperate with the Holy Spirit's work with and in us to overcome sin's grip on our lives and our relationships. We are reminded that God is God and we are not. The scriptures tell us who and whose we are, that we are God's children made in God's image. And in Christ, we are set free from the powers of sin and death. Baptism marks the beginning of that life of freedom from sin and death and freedom for love and justice as citizens of God's kingdom. That's why Lent is historically a season of final preparation for baptism. And for the baptized, it's a season for recommitment to Christ and to the Christian life. Jesus gives us some guidance for living as a citizen of the kingdom of God in his Sermon on the Mount, a portion of which we just read. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus names three essential practices of the Christian life. Almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. I think if you read that passage, at least to me, it's pretty clear. It's like if you follow Jesus, that's what you do. You give alms, you pray, and you fast. And he also warns against making wealth and the pursuit of wealth an idol. The three practices open our hearts to grace. That's why in our United Methodist tradition, we call them means of grace. They're where God promises to meet us and to, con to convey grace into us. Jesus also says that we are not, they are not for stoking our ego and making ourselves look better than we really are. They are given to draw us closer to God and to help us grow in holiness of heart and life. As we grow in grace, we become more resistant to sin and sin's power over us. The first habit Jesus mentions is almsgiving, which is simply being a friend of the poor. Jesus identifies himself with the people crushed and exploited by the world. He said, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Almsgiving is giving out of our abundance to people who have nothing. They are hungry, thirsty homeless, and mourning. They are poor, the poor of the world. Jesus expects his followers to be friends of the poor, 
to be generous and compassionate. Because when you are a friend with the poor, you are a friend of Christ. Prayer is making time to be available to God. We pray, when we pray, we show up and open our hearts to God. It's like a conversation with someone who knows and loves you beyond measure. In prayer, we share hopes, dreams, and needs. And when we pray, we need to make sure that we're not the only ones doing the talking. Leave time and space to be quiet and to listen for what God has to say to you. And it's not part of the gospel lesson that we read tonight, but it's right before it or in the middle of it. Jesus gives us a model prayer for us to guide us in how to pray, which we know as the Lord's Prayer, which we will pray together in a few minutes. And finally, Jesus talks about fasting. Fasting is a powerful means of grace. It's the way God gives us to imitate what God did for us in the life of God's son, Jesus. Paul writes about this in Philippians chapter 2, where he writes, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. In Jesus, God set aside God's div divine immortality to become one of us, one with us in Jesus. As Eugene, Eugene Peterson describes it, God became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Charles Wesley describes God's self-emptying in Jesus in the third stanza of his magnificent hymn, And Can It Be?, where he writes of Jesus, he left his father's throne above, so free, so infinite his grace, emptied himself of all but love, and bled for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy all, immense and free, for, oh my God, it found out me. When we fast from food for a time and feel the emptiness in our belly, our body tells us what self-emptying feels like. It also reminds us that prayer and these spiritual disciplines involve the whole body. And when we fast, we feel the physical consequences of self-emptying which is a prompt to pray. And when we feel that pang of hunger, it is a prompt to pray and to remember all that God did for you in the life, death, and resurrection of God's Son. It's also a way of being in solidarity with people for whom fasting is not a choice, the poor and the hungry, and to share in their pain by practicing this spiritual discipline, this means of grace. For when we are in when we fast, we are in solidarity with the people that Jesus most closely identifies himself with. And we come more closely into his presence. 
That's why John Wesley and, you know, he, he practiced this fasting for most of his adult life, at least one day a week. Um, and during Lent, twice a week on Wednesday and Fridays. Um, and he encouraged the Methodists to do the same. Not to be imitate him, but one, to do what Jesus told, tells his followers to do. And because it was such a powerful means of grace. But because it's not easy and it's inconvenient, it's also the most neglected means of grace. And it always has been. But it's one that I encourage you, but also there's, you know, don't do it to, you know, if you can't do it because of your health, then don't, there's other ways you can do it. <laughs> you know, that's why Wesley added abstinence to the general rule around fasting. Um, so, Let's commit to keeping a holy Lent, either by taking on a new practice such as fasting or more disciplined, frequent prayer or more intentional almsgiving. Make that new practice a habit that opens your heart more and more to receive the grace that we all need to grow in holiness of heart and life and to live as citizens of God's kingdom. Now, if you've checked your email, you've probably seen I've prepared a Lenten devotional guide. It's something that I, I felt the prompting of the spirit to, that this is something that to do before I retired as a gift to the people of Trinity I hope I'd encourage you to at least take a look at it. Um, and I, I pray that you would use it and read, read. It's just a brief passage every day with a prayer um, and a hymn by Charles Wesley. And that this is a, another means of grace to help us grow closer to Christ and to one another. Um, in this season of Lent and to prepare us to celebrate the resurrection and Easter. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the only Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penance and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all ha have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now bow before our Creator and Redeemer. And I, as we now go um, to pray this prayer of confession, you can remain seated, which I suspect you are, 
Or if your knees allow and maybe you have a pillow, you might want to kneel. As we pray this prayer of confession together, in, as, and Joey will lead us in praying it in unison. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me here with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. May the almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance, forgive your sins, and restore you by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Uh, now is an opportunity for us to pause and share signs and words of Christ's peace and forgiveness with one another. You can turn to the people that are in the room with you or unmute yourself to share the peace with others. to you all and also with you let us pray almighty and forgiving God we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. 
but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that our hearts may be thankful and that we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God with patience and passion. Be deliberate in enacting your faith. Be steadfast in celebrating the Spirit's power, and may peace be your way in the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you, Joey. You are welcome. Everyone can unmute.